Okay guys, we've got a 2011 Toyota Venza we're going to do front brakes on. You're only going to use four tools for this. Uh, one of them is your lug wrench, the other is the jack. The third thing is the C-clamp, and the fourth thing is a 12 millimeter wrench. That's it. So first thing we want to do is take the cap off on your brake fluid. If you notice, you're low. If you need brakes, especially, you're low. Because as you wear the brakes down, that amount of fluid needs to take up the space that is missing in between the rotor and the brake shoe because of the thickness of the brake shoe. I'll explain that more when we get down there. This job really doesn't take that long. This car is quick and easy to do these on. Um, so let's take the cap off because we're going to be forcing the, the fluid back into here with the C-clamp so that we don't have to bleed the system. Very simple process here. Uh, one person can do this in about 20 minutes, both sides. So um, again, let's don't top off the fluid yet and you'll see that level there is going to raise. Right now you can see we need to be up to here and we're down to there. So we're not going to add any fluid yet. If we were just going to um, top off all the fluids, we can do that. But since we're say, changing the brakes, we're not going to top off the fluid because we're going to force some of that fluid back in there. So let's go ahead and get this tire off. Okay, we got that tire off. Now let's go ahead and inspect the rotor. Just run your finger up it, make sure there's no grooves and such. Your rotor sometimes needs turned if it's not really smooth on both the front and the back. And if this is too thin because this thickness here, because it's been turned before, then you're gonna to wanna to replace the rotor. And they'll let you know that when you take it down to an auto parts store to see if you can get it turned. Um, if you need to get it turned, these ones don't. But if you do, you're gonna to have to take this back piece off. But in our case, we're gonna separate the caliper. So right back here, let me turn the light on. Okay, so right back here, you see this little spongy looking uh, gasket here? That's where your 12 millimeter is. There's gonna be one on the top and one on the bottom. So let's go ahead, at this point, we'll grab our 12 millimeter ratchet wrench, because it's quicker, and I got it going the wrong way, and let's take those off. It might be a little bit snug. Yeah, a little bit. That one's loose, and let's pull the bottom. That one's loose. Now we can put, take those off, and we'll pull this caliper back. Okay, so now we got the two 12 millimeter bolts off. We can grab this caliper and yank it back out of there. Just like that. We'll set it aside. We need to run the pistons down. We can pull the brakes off at this point. There's one of them. And there's the back one. Now, if you notice the back one, will have the piece on it that tells you when the brakes are going too low. See that piece of metal right there? It will rub, here's the thickness. When it gets down to that point, it'll rub and squeal on that. And that's telling you, hey, you need to change your brakes. In this case, there's still a lot of meat left on these, but there's been a lot of hard stopping, a lot of and quick, real quick stopping. And so the glazed over the brakes here. A lot of times you can just rough that up with sandpaper and go back to using it. But in this case, we're gonna change them. So we'll pull those off. Now we need to get this cylinder down. This is where we're gonna pump the fluid up. Now. This is going to keep you from bleeding the brakes. So what I like to do is I like to take that front one that doesn't have that clip, set it back in the caliper, and this is where I use my C-clamp. I squeeze this down, and when I squeeze this down, let me move back, when I squeeze this down with the clamp, it'll take these two pistons and shove them back in, thus pushing that fluid back through that hose and up into that, that reservoir. So let's get that squeeze back. So as I turned this, I was cranking that shoe back. Now you see it moved those pistons back on hand here, sorry. So let's go ahead and take this clamp off now. Get that a clearer picture. Now they're back there, so we have the extra distance because the new brake shoes, you know, are much thicker and they're gonna take up more space, so we need those moved back. Now, we've also shoved that fluid back. Let me show you what I was talking about. Now, do you see our level? We don't need that much to fill it up because we brought it up. Also, we've done something else. With the lid off, we've allowed it to breathe, so the air has been forced out. Therefore, we don't have to bleed the system either. So let's go ahead and set the brakes back in there. Now, once again, when we set the brakes in, the backing, the one that makes the squealing, is going to go towards the back. You can see how it's rounded here and rounded with the rotor, so that means we want it to sit like this. There's a couple small clips that it sits in. Just like that. You'll be able to see it better on the front one. If we stick the, the top one in first, it'll slide a little bit easier. So here's the front one. To give you a better example, the rounded side goes with the smoothest of the rotor. Shove the top in first. 
and then the bottom will slide in. Now if you wanted to at this point, you could put a little bit of grease right around these circles and the tab itself. That stops the squealing whenever you stop. If you have squeaky brakes, you may just need a little bit of grease on there. And a lot of times it's just dirt and you just need to clean the rotors. You can get right in the rim with a water hose and clean when you wash your car and make a huge difference. So now we're gonna go ahead and set the caliper deck down. Now these bolt or these uh, lugs will push in. Do you see that? So, and you're gonna have to push those in when you rotate the caliper down. So let's go ahead and slide the caliper on. Just like that, see how they catch? So just give them a push in and then that will rotate and the bottom fell in. Let's tighten back up our 12 millimeters. Okay, so our two 12 millimeters are now tight. Now you'll notice that the brakes are still a little bit loose in there. I'm gonna show you how to adjust those so that we get them properly adjusted. So let's go ahead and throw the tire back on real quick. Tighten down the lug nuts and get the jack hop from underneath it. Top off our fluid and I'll show you what we do before you drive this vehicle. Off up to the fill line. And about there looks good. Let's stick our cap back on. And she's not threaded, she just shoves down, she's got a seal. All right, now let's jump in the vehicle. Okay, we're inside the vehicle. Before we start this, we're gonna push down on the brakes. Let's spend about five seconds letting it go down. One, two, three, I'm applying more and more pressure. And five, I'm down at the bottom of the floor. Stop, let up, let's do it again. Three times we're gonna do this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll start the car and we'll do it again. One, and you'll notice it got easier. Two, three, that's about five because I missed three or four. Okay, so let's do it again, one more, one, two, three, four, five. That's it. So now we have regular foot brake. We don't have to uh, worry about bleeding this system at all. Brakes feel good. Perfect. So I hope this video helps you out. Please click like, please click subscribe, click on my name underneath this video for all my other how-to videos. And as always guys, enjoy.